So anyway, we're in the uh, back studio of Cheap Joe's Art Stuff in Boone, North Carolina with David R. Smith, um, which distinguishes him from David Smith. All the millions of David Smiths there. All the millions of David Smith. And so even when I put your picture up on, the, on Facebook, I put David R. And uh, your website is dsmithfineart.com. Fineart.com. And if you haven't done it, dsmithfineart.com. You need to go there and look at David's video, playing around and doing stuff. And anyway, so this is David's first time in Boone, first time in Cheap Joe's, and you filled your class. You worked right up to the the very deadline with half your class. <laughs> Normally on Friday, people are gone by 11:30 or 12, and. Um, when I talked to some of your students this morning, there was not a, almost not a dry eye. I mean, yeah. they were all impressed with, uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself yeah, sure, and sure. a little bit about your technique and what you want your students to leave with at the end of your oh, sure, session. Sure. Well, first, thanks so much for having me. Um, it was a blast and we all had a, a great time. Um, so let me start with that last question before I forget kind of like um, what I want the participants to leave with when I teach a workshop. Well, um, the more I paint in watercolor, the more uh, loose and impressionistic I get with my watercolors. And I really enjoy, if you've seen um, a YouTube video of myself or um, you've seen that I spatter water and I work a lot of wet into wet and pretty loose and I just enjoy that process. But I understand that that process is not for everybody. <laughs> that, right. that is kind of scary for folks. Um, so this would be maybe an example of, uh, you may have seen a video of me um, doing a misty lake scene and spattering water and getting these organic looking trees and things like that. And I just enjoy that process. But that's just one approach to watercolor. Right. That's the great thing about watercolor, it's so versatile. Right. And, uh, and, and so, then you have this that would compare it to kind of a, yeah, the com a contrast. The contrast, yeah. Between, yeah. And uh, and so I should thank first of all I should, you know thank Chief Joe's of course for having me and he's just a wonderful guy and everyone here the staff has been fantastic but thank all the artists that I've taken workshops from in the past and um, all the techniques that I've learned from them and so when I was studying for example um, how to use masking fluid um, and I was studying Roland Roy Craft and Nita Engel and all these folks um, I took a lot from them um, and I tried to relay that information um, to participants here um, and hopefully use those techniques that I've learned from these other artists and, and made it my own and then incorporated in different ways. And so one way to, to paint a watercolor, talking about how versatile it is, is by masking and pouring colors and then glazing and, and uh, negative painting and pushing some things back and pulling some um, subjects uh, or um, shapes forward. Another technique is um, working very loose and spattering water and creating mist and um, and my first introduction to watercolor was from a gentleman named Gordon McKenzie up in Canada and he uh, I think in his book he talked about you know how to create lost edges and I just really love that effect that misty look and so I've worked with that and that's an example there. Um, Let me ask you a question sure. to interrupt you in yeah, the middle yeah. of this yeah, kind yeah. of thing. What I started thinking about as you were talking as I look at your paintings What's the balance between being gifted and learning to do some art? Oh, okay. I mean, obviously you're gifted, but you've learned techniques too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. How does that work? I mean, like when I talked to Keiko Tanabe, who you've taken a class from, yeah. she is gifted. I mean, she can do this stuff in 30 minutes. It would take us a week to do sometimes. You know, it's, uh, I really believe, what is it, the 10,000 hour rule or okay. something like that? I really believe that if people might have um, a, a little knack for something, okay. but a, if, gift. a little gift for something. Right. Um, but like when I grew up, I was drawing in graphite. I never touched color until I graduated from high school or touched a paintbrush. I was all just working on drawing and, right. and very s stiff and tight. But um, as a kid um, going through grade school, my drawings were just as horrible as everybody else, <laughs> everybody else's drawings. It's hard to believe. Right? <laughs> and uh, but my father encouraged me to um, work on my drawing skills, and so by the time I got into high school, I could 
uh, pretty accurately um, get, represent. represent something, and it's pretty photorealistic. Um, so I appreci appreciate that uh, encouragement. Um, but but I hadn't put in my hours of work. I was oh, okay. yeah doing um, doodling around and doing a lot of drawing, and um, so I think you really need, it's just a matter of practice. I don't believe I really honestly don't believe that. Um, people have a, this natural gift like right. Beethoven and stuff, they had to put in their time. The Beatles, they had to put in their time to Who do that. Who was the guy reason. that wrote the book? I can't remember. How about the 10,000 yeah. Hour? I can't remember. Because he mentioned the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. That's why I referred at, to it. At, uh, at some point, you put in the hours. you got to put in the time. So it's just so a matter of practice. Anybody can learn right. what I'm doing. You can okay. learn it. But you got to put the time in. you got to put the practice in. So you don't have to be gifted in order to no. take a David R. Smith workshop. No. Yep. And you I, have to be open. You got to be open. You got to have the, the mindset. It's called a, um, uh, the, is, is a fixed mindset and it's a growth mindset. And if you're a fixed mindset, it's just saying some people are gifted, some people have, and some people don't. Then you're kind of uh, you're already putting up that barrier. Right. You really have to come open that you can learn it. You, that you, just like a sport or anything, right. have that growth mindset that. You, have, you can't do it yet. You will be able to learn it. It's just a matter of time. You will develop the skills if you put in the time. Well, but one thing, one way to one way to kind of uh, shortcut it is by taking workshops. Okay. I definitely like taking from Keiko Tanabe and and Gordon McKenzie and people. Um, you will learn techniques, and they will uh, speed that process up. Right, definitely. Right. Yeah. 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 I think what workshops are. Although, when I ask people in your workshop how they found out about you and wanted to take your class. You're a first time uh, artist instructor here and sometimes it's hard to fill yeah. if you're not an internationally famous artist. And most everybody said your YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah. They saw your YouTube videos and that encouraged them to take a live class. So that's an interesting point of view. To say. Wow. Well, so uh, you want to... Uh, so I let's... let's uh, the thing that amazed me about David is that he's got like a hundred paintings scattered throughout the workshop. And the difference between this and this and this, that, and this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what, how does that work? How do, well, I seem to be doing everything. Yeah, I. Uh... I'm trying, like talk about the growth mindset, I'm really trying to stay open to all uh, learning and just okay. and learning. As, but I want to be the best watercolorist I can be and the best instructor that I can be. And so, like I said, I took from Keiko Tanabe and all these different artists, anybody, uh, the students I learn from, I really want to learn a lot. And, um, and I think uh, I don't want to try and, you know, narrow it down to something any sooner than I have to, a particular approach. Um, I think... The more approaches I can learn and techniques, the stronger artist I'll, I'll become. Um, and again, I don't think the way that I'm moving, getting loose and spattering and, have, and really impressionistic is, um, the, is, is for everybody. Not everyone um, is attracted to that. And so I want to help participants find approaches and techniques that works for them and what they're right. comfortable with and what they enjoy. And I do find um, you know, masking and pouring, for example, um, it's been, it's really helped me be successful with getting the AWS and the NWS. All those paintings were done with masking and pouring and glazing. And so I want to introduce folks to that. Even though it, it for me, it, on my journey, as I'm becoming more loose and not using as much masking and, and pouring that technique, that approach, I still want to introduce it to folks because um, mm -hmm. I think it's valuable to know how that works and, and they might just absolutely love it. And so I, and I still appreciate it and I still enjoy it. Um, just not as much as uh, maybe some other approaches. So I show them that approach. I, I show them how to uh, fill the canvas with color and how to lift and just another approach. Um, and that will resonate with um, other individuals. Everybody has a, a unique um, interest and um, attraction to a certain look. And maybe right. some people like realistic and tight and some people like super loose and more abstract or impressionistic. So I, I want to um, help everyone find the enjoyment of watercolor. And watercolor is just super versatile. There's like so many different approaches and techniques and effects you can get that uh, I can't uh, I can't imagine working in another medium at this point. It's just so much fun. Well, that's interesting that you pointed that uh, the fact that you're 
dabbling in a lot of different techniques. Yeah, yeah. In that growth, some artists I've been acquainted with kind of do the same thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's one way of teaching is yeah. kind of give people the same kind of, but yet this is like more open. Like you said, if you come to a David R. Smith class, you might pick up on one thing that something else might not flip your, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think all the approaches are going to be, they all have some overlap. They all will use negative pain. They all are going to work, um, Look, we're going to look heavily on values. They all have uh, similarities, but there's definitely some unique aspects to each approach. This was one of your demos, right? Yeah, we were working on a painting, so you can still see the masking fluid on there, and it hasn't been peeled off. So this is one of those paintings that was masked, and then there was some pouring, some, and then after the pourings, we started the negative paint to push some parts back and to pull some things forward. And so this one's it's almost done, but it, it needs all the masking to come off, and it needs the real dark darks to get in there to make it pop. Yeah. Well, your colors, one of the, the other thing that really strikes me is your colors are very undiluted, it seems like, or, I mean, what would you, they're very bright, yeah. very I, um, basic almost, okay. but yet at the same time, there's a lot of, lot of activity in the background. Going in there. Yeah, yeah um, well, first of all, I, I try to, I rarely ever mix a color on the palette, I like the, I want the colors, the okay. pure colors to mix on the paper, okay. is one way to keep it nice and clean. Um, because who knows by the time you go from the palette to the paper what it's going to look like. Uh, so yeah, I let... Uh, so in doing these trees in the foreground there, you've let it kind of blend itself, right? Yeah, but uh, this is also done, was done in stages. So this is another approach. Okay. With, um, um, I, I worked uh, light values to identify the whites. I worked mid values to identify my lights. And then I poked in some darks where needed to okay. identify the mids. So that's another another approach uh, that's really popular. Um, it, uh, there's a, a gentleman in Minnesota named Andy Evenson who's really good at working with values and uh, really drove that home and, and talks a lot about, like um, Don Anders talking right. about linking right. shapes and things like that. Right. And that, right. that really right. focuses on that. But there's carryover from that understanding those concepts into whatever approach that you find that resonates with you. Then you have the pumpkin. <laughs> with the, the is pumpkin. that a barn with the... Yeah, the light shining the, through The light shining through yeah. the old barn. Yeah, so this one was uh, done by, uh, again, masking um, all the whites and then uh, pouring. So I protect the whites and I poured yellow and maybe some oranges and reds and I poured blue from this side. The same approach that was done with this was, was done with this. There was... Uh, Again, a yellow poured and red poured and a blue poured from this side. So whether it's a landscape or a floral, the same approach can be applied. And then after that, then we uh, we push some things back by um, negative painting. We pull some things forward, and then uh, and then I started working down that value scale and started adding the darks in, and then and then lifting and softening those edges um, where the masking was lifted off. And then was this a last minute kind of addition? No, a he little was, cow. He was he was he was <laughs> popped in there. He was uh, he was just masked around. He's just part of the he's just another shape, part of the barn, yeah. So what what impressed you most about your week at Chief Joe's? Oh gosh. It, well, I I gotta be honest, it was uh, super friendly. I mean the uh, every day the uh, the participants had and I had the little gifts, gift bags on our table. The, the space is huge, great lighting. There's a, a camera above you that projects onto a big screen. Um, the lunches are right there, so we just had, really could maximize our time. We, we were working on like, God, like seven, seven paintings, not including little practice paintings. I mean, I, so who knows how many paintings we did, so we could really maximize the, the, uh, the time available. Well, people seem to like the drill sergeant approach. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's kind of what comes to mind is that you pushed your students. Yeah. You didn't let them just kind of float out there, <laughs> and and that is and they seem to like it. They, yeah, they, yeah. We all had a great time, but they all just crawled out of there just exhausted. <laughs> their hands were all deformed. And their all their painting muscles are just so sore. They're just painting painting yeah. monsters. Yeah. No, we all had a great time. They all left happy, but. Yeah, we, we, we definitely kept them going, and, and they were just hungry to learn, so I just 
fed them you know, what they wanted to learn. And I, when I've talked to students, you know, the difference between a YouTube or a DVD and a real class. Yeah. I mean, there's something about a real class that, and the interaction with everybody and being spurred on by somebody. There's always going to be somebody a little bit more, what, um, mature in their art. Oh, sure. There's always more going to be degrees. people to... It's like the Bible says, don't compare yourself one to another. Yeah, yeah. Because if you do, you're going to be, yeah. you're going to go out disappointed. Sure, sure. Because uh, nobody can do that half hour little painting you did at the end as quickly as you did it. Sure, and sure. It's, it's going to take practice. Yeah. You're kind of doing this thing, and I'm going, how does he know how to do that? So, yeah, yeah. But so the, you are loose. I am. Yeah. Like a burrage, burrage. Burridge, Robert Burridge would put a brush on his stick and stand back about four feet and say, you know, loosen up. That, that's his mantra, is wow, loosen up. Wow. And it seems like you're, you've got some areas where there's a lot of good detail, but then there's areas where it's very loose at the same time. Per, that person, when you're talking about everyone's got their personal uh, attraction to certain styles and techniques, I love a, a painting that's got some loose qualities to it right. that really showcases the beauty of watercolor. Right. Shows the textures and the fun accents with the blossoms and blooms and the and the transparencies and all the great things you get with watercolor. But I also love a painting that shows the skill of the artist right. and has a part that's a little tighter and um, you know. Right. I mean looking at this I can see Don Andrews and Tom Jones oh, okay. the, the, what they do with their foliage with oh, all okay. and how they but then you know, having the Canadian geese kind of flow through this and very atmospheric, not, not, yes, this is more in your face. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is more soft and soft and yeah. laid back, and it's just, it's pretty amazing. So, I think, uh, you know, there's really not a whole lot else we can do, and one of the reasons we do this is to kind of introduce you to. Yeah. Our crowd, sure, sure, and um, I would assume that you'll be back at some point. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm already so, coming back. We got plans for uh, a couple of years coming yeah. back every other year, kind of thing. Yeah. So, and one of your students said that class is going to fill real fast. <laughs> Knowing, and you'll probably get some people that were in your class this time to come back. I mean, I heard, well, yeah, I heard them talk. A number of them already registered, registered for the next. <laughs> Two years down the road, they already registered, so yeah. that's great. So that's uh, so you're still young. Your AWS, NWS, and all those other. Um, I got the Skyledge Award this year. Okay, the TWSA Award. What do like, you say? Uh, transparent watercolor. Yeah, TWSA. Their top award is their Skyledge Award. Okay. And uh, I'm so honored to, to give that award this year. You know, the thing that impresses me about you, David, is that you are passionate. I mean, you're, and you remind me of my cousin, Mike, who took several Stephen Coiler classes oh. here, and now he's doing his thing, and he'll be back for, a, I think it's John Lovett. Okay. The Australian guy. Yep, yep. The end of love the year. his work, too. And when I talked to him, you're Minnesota, right? Yeah. Kind of. He's Michigan. Okay. There is a kind of a. There's a little accent if you really listen. There's a <laughs> midwestern accent. There's a midwestern, a northern midwestern accent. <laughs> but I think that every time I peeked my head in your class this week, you were. You're you're on stage. Well, your enthusiasm is very evident Thank for you. what you're doing. And I think that fits in with, it's like Robert Burridge again would say, if you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? Yeah, yeah. You know, and you seem to be really enjoying this yeah. part of your life, and that's a great thing. If, so. if I didn't want to have fun and, and <laughs> all day, and, and, uh, and if I wanted to work hard and not have fun, then I would paint in oils or yeah. acrylics. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I love oil and acrylics and, too. I, and, I, I make that joke, make fun of the oil painters right, and acrylic right. painters. Because they're very detailed. <laughs> Sometimes I get hit by a tomato or something. Right. But no, I love all the mediums, but watercolor is the best. Watercolor is the best. And I think on that note, we will see you in two years. All right. Maybe before. You never know what's going to happen. Check out dsmithfineartscom 
and go to that little video that David does, and, and you, you do a pouring thing too, kind of like fun with the artist. <laughs> So uh, I think we could all take a lesson from David that we need to enjoy ourselves. And the process is yeah. as much as, as important as the product. You want to enjoy the process. Right. So, thank you very much for thank joining you. us, My and we'll, we'll see you in two My years. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.